Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today let's talk about uh, model context protocol, MCPs, MCP servers, stuff like that. So if you, uh, like me, uh, didn't really follow all that uh, AI agent hype and MCP server hype recently, uh, this video could be a good uh, introduction and uh, your starting point in your own journey exploring this AI world. So let's start with uh, an example and then we go back to some diagrams and basics and at the end we'll all also write some code uh, to create our own small uh, mcp server so imagine you want to allow llm to manage your computer files um, you want to search something maybe uh, reorganize your folders stuff like that um, and um, MCP server called uh, file system allows you to do that. So uh, in my example, I'll be using Claude desktop because it allows you to uh, add um, MCP uh, integrations uh, for, the, for your local MCP uh, servers. And uh, this bit here uh, basically extends uh, Claude desktop to allow uh, work with the files. So if we go to, uh, to Claude and click here, you see I have an extension uh, file system here. And if I click, I see all the uh, actions that it can do. It's called tools in MCP protocol. And uh, for example, I have uh, my uh, Git folder, uh, uh, Git fol folder where I store my uh, projects. So it has a bunch of repos here. And if I go to uh, Claude and uh, basically try this prompt, uh, it says uh, list uh, directories in my Git folder and store that as a markdown file in the same directory. So it will try to get the list of files and create a new one with the content of, of that result. So let's run this. It will understand that it needs to use uh, the MCP integration, external integration, and uh, it will always prompt you uh, to approve actions. So you can see exactly what it will going to do. In, in this case, it will list allowed uh, directories. Um, so let's do allow once. And now it will get the, the contents there uh, in, in the Git uh, directory right now. And after that, uh, as we, uh, um, it will prepare the file, uh, the markdown file, as I asked, and it will uh, create file with this content. So once that's done, um, I think that's done. We can ls here now. Oops, uh, ls here, and you can see now we have this uh, new folder file created. So let's uh, open it. And yeah, here we go. The following directories are present in my Git folder. That's the list and it's proper markdown. So um, all good. And as you've seen, there's a lot of uh, options uh, here uh, to move files, to create folders, uh, edit files, uh, etc. Uh, so you can imagine some workflows when you ask your LLM to manage some folder for you or to do some repetitive task to organize your your computer stuff like that. Um, so let's go back to basics. What is uh, MCP? Um, an MCP as a protocol uh, to have some kind of standard how you can extend your LLM and how you can provide more context to LLM, and also. Um, as you as you see, you can create some actions, so you can wrap your uh, your actions or APIs uh, into things that uh, LLM can understand. So you can actually allow LLM to do uh, to do things for you, like creating files, calling some APIs, um, etc. And um, it basically have this uh, standard way of building integrations into LLMs. Um, it's been a while since the release, uh, and recently it's getting more and more traction, uh, I believe, because it was uh, added into um, coding agents like Cursor or WinSurf, so MCP support is there. Uh, you can see uh, that's uh, the Cursor documentation. 
uh, I was recently u- trying uh, Juni, uh, the uh, coding agent from uh, IntelliJ that's built into the uh, I, um, their IDE. Uh, I think MCP support there is still limited, but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it will be fully supported um, uh, in near future. So um, for, for the um, uh, diagram, right? Uh, we have uh, things like host, uh, which c- could be like the uh, w- with multiple MCP clients inside, and the host is uh, uh, like a tool that you're using to interact with uh, LLM. For example, Cloud Desktop, or uh, Cursor, or Windsurf, and other stuff. So inside your host, there'll be multiple clients. Each connects to MCP server, uh, and MCP server is a separate program that could run uh, locally on your machine or that could be deployed somewhere and that called remote MCP server. Um, for, for a long time, uh, Claude desktop um, only supported the local uh, MCP uh, clients and uh, the, the integration by standard, um, standard uh, I.O. So there's two modes how you how how they uh, LLM can talk to MCP servers. Uh, uh, they those called transports. One is uh, standard I/O, so you basically like uh, execute a command, and then the output of that command will be passed back to LLM. And the 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 other one is uh, HTTP server send events. Uh, in that case, your MCP server could still be deployed on your local machine, uh, so you can access it by local host and the port, uh, but over HTTP uh, service end events. But at the same time, if you have using this transport, you can deploy your MCP server remotely. In that case, uh, it's deployed somewhere, and a lot of clients can use it uh, at this and share it at the same time. So it brings. Uh, issues like authentication, like complications like authentication, um, like protection from attacks, like DDoS and stuff like that in that case. But it basically, uh, the benefit of remote MCP server is that you don't ask uh, the user to install anything on, on their machine, which could be really frustrating. Uh, on the other hand, if you're using the local MCP server, uh, you can do things like uh, we've seen before the um, uh, you can uh, allow this uh, tool to manage your machine and it won't be obviously possible if you run it on the in the remote mode so there are use cases for both um, Claude desktop for, for a while was only supporting local uh, MCP servers uh, now there is support for remote as well but it's still only available in uh, higher tiers. Um, I think I've seen somewhere that it's coming to Pro soon. Um, and overall, I think that will be the future of uh, MCP server support. So I think eventually all the tools will support uh, the remote mode. And in that case, if you want to extend your uh, LLM functionality, the only thing you need to go is to uh, add a new integration and then the only thing, the only configuration option is the URL uh, of the remote MCP server and maybe some uh, API tokens or some security stuff. And after you've done that, you basically have a new functionality in your LLM. Um, that could be calling stuff, uh, making some changes, as we've seen. Uh, it could be also uh, adding more up-to-date information to your LLM for better decisions, like uh, prices that are uh, currently uh, accurate, and you can use that information uh, provided by MCP server in your LLM for some analysis and stuff like that. So, um, also what I'm planning to do in um, next videos, uh, Cloudflare workers and now have support for building uh, MCP remote servers. Uh, there is like a template, you just spin it and then 
uh, you can start writing your code and it will be deployed as a Cloudflare worker uh, with all um, MCP protocol uh, format and standards in place. So you basically just need to write your tools. And um, that's pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, if you want to start, um, yeah, one thing before we move to the coding bit is there is a way to convert the transport with this MCP proxy. So for example, you want to use an external MCP server uh, in cloud desktop in free tier, but you only uh, that only supports standard input output. So you uh, run this MCP proxy on your local machine. You can configure it to talk to the external MCP server, and then MCP proxy will convert the um, convert it to standard input output, so your cloud desktop can connect to it. And also, it could be the the um, the other way around. But I see the most uh, usages is from this point one uh, uh, to convert it back to standard uh, I/O. Um, regarding the code, um, I created a simple project here um, using the uh, provided SDKs for for uh, TypeScript. Uh, you need uh, server MCP and uh, server transport for standard I/O. Uh, and the uh, first thing is we create uh, the server, pretty simple, just the name and the version, really. Um, and at the end, we say that uh, this server that we created will connect via transport, and the transport will be a standard, uh, standard I.O. Um, and after that, you can add tools. So server.tool will add an extra tool to, to the... Uh, to the features of the MCP server. In my case, uh, it's just like a super simple wrapper around public, uh, publicly available API on the internet. So there's like a Pokemon API. Um, it is on this pokeapi.co uh, API v2. And then you can do the get request for the Pokemon and then pass the name and it will return you some information about that Pokemon uh, as a JSON. And this tool basically says that we can get the Pokemon by name. Uh, here we define um, the, um, the input parameter that uh, LLM can send to us, like the instead of hard coding the name here, we can pass it from the prompt. Uh, then we do a simple call and return back the JSON. Um, once we register that tool, uh, we can use it uh, from LLM. Um, so the thing how I edit it into Cloud Desktop, I run the build. So in the build, we have the index.js file. And then here, a new entry in the, uh, in the config. So this is the name of the integration. And then the command, I'm running node. Um, if you just install Node on your machine, you can avoid this long thing, but I'm managing my stuff through uh, my tool, so I need to provide a full path because I don't have Node in my uh, path by default. And then the arg will be the, uh, the path to the index.js file. Um, you need to restart Cloud Desktop once you edit integration. Mm, you save that file and restore the cloud desktop. Then you click here and you see you have a new integration right here, Pokey API. So let's create a new chat and uh, I can go back to uh, here. And if I get this prompt, let's try that out. So that's Dito is the name of one of the Pokemons. I just got it from the docs. Um, so now Claude asks us if we OK to call this integration and call that particular tool. It will do the request to the get Pokemon. And it basically abstracts LLM uh, from actually doing the API call because API call will be uh, inside our MCP server. Um, and MCP server is like a proxy between the real calls and LLM. 
So let's call, uh, let's say allow once. Now see we, we the LLM got some JSON here as a response from, um, from the API. And now it's trying the best to uh, convert that uh, JSON to human readable description of the Pokemon. Uh, pretty cool as well. So the amount of uh, stuff uh, there growing is, is a lot. So if we go to the uh, Smithery, uh, that's a registry for the all available uh, MCP servers. So there's like uh, almost 2K integrations only in the, in the popular uh, section. So you can check that out. Uh, GitHub looks really interesting. Um, Notion, if you're using that. Uh, and also I really want to try uh, at some point some integration with uh, database tools or like things like Superbase or Neon database um, to basically like LLM will be able to uh, access your database, do the queries, do some kind of suggestions, how you can improve stuff. Um, so that all looks really uh, interesting. And yeah, I'm going to dig uh, deeper. Uh, let me know what you think about all that um, AI agent hype and um, or MCP servers in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and yeah, see you next one. Bye bye.